thousands of visitors are eroding the fragile structures. In addition to the annual festival, Katku, for decades out of bounds in a military restricted zone, has now been open to the public. Travel agents are offering bus tours and trekking trips to the Holy Shrine, and many fear that it will turn into a sort of Buddhist theme park. When Buddhists perform good deeds, they can share them with others. The bell rung three, five, or seven times, always in a sequence of uneven numbers, announces the good deed, which all in hearing distance can share. Most of the pilgrims gather at the main temple, Su Taun Pie, the largest and oldest building at Kat Ku. Pilgrims come to pray before the great Buddha image. There are four postures or mudras for representing Buddha, one standing, two seated, and one reclining. In this mudra, the right hand is touching the ground, calling the earth to witness his enlightenment. Buddha, a historical figure named Siddhartha Gautama, lived in the 6th century before Christ and preached moderation as the way to enlightenment. This middle way remains the guiding spirit of Burmese Buddhism. No amount of religious fervor can disguise the fact that for many the day began before dawn. The Lishu are devout Buddhists. In other areas of Myanmar, many hill tribes practice animism, but in the Shan state, more than 90% of the population is Buddhist. The novices file in for their evening prayers. Girls can also become novices, but monasteries for nuns are not as prevalent. There are no binding oaths, and women can enter or leave a monastery at will. Offerings of fresh fruit are placed near the altar and left behind, another way of gaining merit in the complicated balance sheet of Buddhist morality. Green leaves often replace flowers because they don't wilt as quickly in the heat. The incense, the shimmering light of thousands of candles, and the relentless sun set the worshippers in a kind of trance. A gong sounds the snowflakes prayers, and an entire village from the north gathers outside to pray together in front of the pagodas. Offerings of fruit, sweetened rice, fried vegetables, and pao sweets fill a makeshift altar. After the festival, those in charge of the pagoda complex will clear away the food, dismantle the altars, and donate the dishes to the poor. Many of those who devote themselves to maintaining the payas are said to be descendants of former temple slaves. Now they perform their duties voluntarily, bound to Kat Ku only by their karma.
For hundreds of years, the Pau have come to this deserted place to pray, to make offerings and to win merit for a better life when they return. How long they will be able to keep this mysterious place to themselves is questionable. Ever more foreigners are finding their way into the Shan Hills for a look at the wonder of Katku. The Burmese have a word for foreigners, Kala, and they know that once they've arrived, nothing will ever be the same. The sun sets on Katku, lost city of 10,000 pagodas. Yes, it has many names, but what do you gain from naming a mystery a mystery? A mystery.